Hey, Oscar, did you know this guy in China thought he was Jesus Christ's brother? Really? Yeah. So today's topic is about the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom. For some background, we have to go to 19th century China. At this time, the country was ruled under the Qing Dynasty. And to say things went bad for them during the 19th century would be a massive understatement. They had a lot of problems during this time, experiencing a series of famines, natural disasters, and, worst of all, defeats from foreign powers. This led to what became known as China's Century of Humiliation. Due to all these problems, farmers began being heavily taxed, rent rose, and peasants deserted from their lands in search of a better home. Opium also became a major problem during the century, as China would suffer their defeat in the First Opium War. This led to China becoming a haven for bandits, and many secret societies would be formed. One of these societies, a Protestant missionary service known as Wampoa, would create a book called Good Words to Admonish the Age. This book would end up in the hands of one Hong Jiquan in the early 1800s. Hong initially didn't care about the book, but suddenly he had a vivid dream where he was greeted by a golden-haired, bearded man and another man who he addressed as Elder Brother. His brother, seeing some sort of Christian symbolism in his dream, told him to read the book I mentioned earlier. And so, Hong did. After reading it, he realized the following. He was the brother of Jesus and had met God in the dream that he had previously. Following this realization, Hong would become the leader of a sect known as the Society of God Worshippers. The sect promoted a new branch, one of Taiping Christianity, which Hong believed was the restoration of classical Chinese beliefs intermixed with missionary Christianity. The sect grew under Hong, but after persecution from local Qing authorities, the movement became a guerrilla rebellion. On January 11, 1851, on Hong's birthday, Hong declared himself the Heavenly King of the newest dynasty on the block, the Heavenly Kingdom of Great Peace, or Taiping. The rebellion consisted of minor uprisings until Taiping forces captured Nanjing, renaming it to Tianjing, or Chinese for Heavenly Capital. From here, Hong began to do what he believed his dream had instructed him to do, kill all Manchus. After Nanjing was occupied, more than 40,000 Manchus were viciously murdered within the city. The kingdom, however, wasn't without its conflicts. In 1853, Hong withdrew to his palace indefinitely, and only ruled by giving out written orders in religious language. He also disagreed a lot with his right-hand man, Yang, becoming ever more suspicious of Yang and his ambitions, extensive network of spies, and even his declarations when speaking as God. In 1856, Hong put Yang and his family to death, along with any soldiers loyal to Yang. Hong also struggled to make any allies and get any support. European powers that they could contact decided to stay neutral in the conflict, and the traditional Chinese middle class members disliked the Taiping Kingdom for their animosity towards Chinese customs and Confucian values. With the Taiping Kingdom failing to take Shanghai in 1860, the Qing Dynasty finally got around to retaking the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom under their rule. With his defeat at Shanghai, Hong declared that God would help him defend Tianjin. However, he died of food poisoning before Qing even reached the city. Following his death, Qing forces took Tianjin, marking the fall of the Taiping Heavenly Kingdom. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, leave a like down below and comment why you enjoyed, and hit the subscribe button as, you know, we just hit 1,000 subscribers, and you can be the start of something big. And uh, I'm sorry if my voice sounds, you know, weird in this video. I'm sick with COVID, and, uh, you know, yeah. But uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.